Season of the Worthy actually has some pretty interesting stuff going on below the surface besides the basic plot of the Almighty crashing into Earth and doing bounties for bunkers. So I wanted to dedicate this video to compiling absolutely all of the secrets, the puzzles, the hidden loot and even leaks of stuff happening later on in the season. We have a ton of info crammed into this one. Don't be shy about hitting the like button. It helps the video and my channel in general. But with that being said, let's jump into it. So on the surface of this season, you have the basic plotline of the Almighty crashing into Earth and helping Rasputin to stop it, of course. But underneath that, there are some pretty crazy and dark storylines going on, some stretching back all the way to Destiny 1. I wouldn't blame anyone for not knowing about this stuff because most of it is buried in these like 7,000 page blog posts and lore tabs of items that most people don't have or even read. So I've done the digging and collected it all so you guys don't have to, but let's begin with Felwinter. So this seems like a plot twist that Bungie's been planning for quite a while now. Back in Destiny 2's launch, we had the Winter's Guile Exotic. This told us that Felwinter isn't actually his real name and he's also running from something or someone. He's got a fake identity, but it wasn't until now when you flash forward to Season of the Worthy where Felwinter is almost like a main character and there's a bunch of pretty crazy stuff we've just learned about him. So we know that Felwinter was an Exo and this is important because Exos are basically high-tech robots with human minds put into them. So they were made by Clovis Bray to be these robot assassins that can basically commit war crimes and go on top secret missions. They get their minds wiped or reset which is important because it stops them going insane but also means they can't remember all these dark things that Clovis Bray makes them do. Now the number in an Exo's name is of course how many times they get reset. Apparently 20 is about the max amount of times anyone can take, which is why Banshee 44 is so messed up and he has complete memory loss. Now this brings us on to Felwinter, who of course doesn't have a number after his name, and that's because it isn't his real name of course, and also he wasn't just a normal Exo either, he was actually a special one. Now this is where we'll get into a little bit of spoiler territory for what happens at the end of the season, so you've been warned this is some dialogue that does appear at the end and some revelations that we're probably going to find out in around May or June, but if you don't want to wait that long, then of course you're going to find out in this one video, but it turns out that he was one of a few special exos controlled by Rasputin called the Seraphs, they were basically walking Rasputins. So at some point he did die probably during the collapse but then after that of course the Traveller resurrected him into a Guardian and that is where his ghost gave him the name Felwinter. Rasputin has basically lost Felwinter now, he's now lost him to the Traveller who controls him as a Guardian which of course Rasputin did not like and this is where the events of Rise of Iron come in. At this point Rasputin then uses Siva as basically bait to try and trick the Iron Lords into coming to collect it because they knew it was a powerful tool. Rasputin reprogrammed it and changed it to be hostile and this is when it attacks the Iron Lords in the replication chamber which we heard about. The entire point of course was to take out Felwinter, that was Rasputin's goal with the Iron Lords being kind of collateral damage. Of course after that the Fallen then got hold of that corrupted evil version of Siva and that was the entire plot of Rise of Iron but essentially that is who Felwinter was, a specialised mobile version of Rasputin as an Exo and we learned this from some dialogue that was found in the game files by Ginzor who of course is an expert by now at finding stuff like this but this transcript was found in the game files and it shows Anna Bray detailing the story of the tyrant which is Rasputin and his son which is Felwinter. Obviously it wasn't his actual son, it's kind of figurative, Warminds can't have children, but Felwinter as well as a few other Seraphs were kind of like his children and is why he also feels bad about it as well. He gave this kind of monologue in it talking about if I can't have my son then no one shall and he unleashes the plague upon him, destroys his son, at the end he says how the tyrant looked upon his tyranny and wept. Now this story is actually pretty interesting because it's actually based off a real life story of Ivan the Terrible. It's one of the most famous Russian paintings and it's of Ivan holding his son that he accidentally killed and in the story Rasputin told, the final line is basically reenacting this painting of Rasputin having remorse over killing his son. So it is pretty fitting that of course Rasputin would tell a story like this which is based off of real Russian history. It's also why Osiris was angry at him in this cutscene and calls him a murderer and a traitor because he had just found out that Rasputin was behind the killing of the Iron Lords with the Siva trap that was placed for Felwinter. Now despite Rasputin doing this, it does seem that we haven't even seen the last of Felwinter, so he is actually going to be returning. Ginzor has also found some data mined files that do show some kind of boss fight against Felwinter, and of course more importantly Felwinter's lie, the shotgun. Some of you Destiny 1 veterans are shuddering right now and some of you probably don't know what this thing is, but Felwinter's Lie was one of the most famous shotguns in Destiny 1. It was the original Iron Banner shotgun and had a ton of range and did ridiculous damage and was basically the first ridiculously overpowered shotgun in the game. 
So this image you're looking at is actually the official ornament for the gun that was taken out of the game files and actually rendered by someone called Kevin Aoti. And this is what it's going to look like in the game. Of course, again, this is the ornament, not the original version, but you can see it's going to be Felwinter's kind of personalized version with his own trinkets and stuff all over it. I'll be interested to see how this new boss fight against this resurrected Felwinter is going to go down because do remember, we actually already fought Felwinter once. He was the very first boss at the end of Rise of Iron. We actually saw the animated Seavified version of him and this is who we killed, but it seems like we're going to have to face him yet again and possibly in the PvE version of the Observatory. Of course, that would mean Vostok Observatory as in Felwinter Peak, the Iron Temple on Felwinter's own mountain, which is fitting. We currently have the PvP version of the map Vostok and this, of course, is based around the original Destiny 1 Iron Temple, which was a PvE area on the map. So it is fitting, of course, Bungie reusing assets, not too surprising, but it does make a lot of sense and this is going to be, I guess, some kind of setting for this new Felwinter boss fight. And at some point, I would imagine the Felwinter's shotgun is going to be a reward. Now, the return of Siva itself isn't too surprising. Again, it is a very underutilized asset that a lot of people enjoyed and I think would be pretty cool to have in Destiny 2, but we've also seen Bungie tease it through a lot of items. We've seen the Siva Transmat effect, the Raiden Flux has got an ornament for it, the Lord of War's got an ornament for it, so you could kind of see it coming. And there's also this image that Kevin Aoti also pulled out the game files and rendered of a siva fired monitor. So there's definitely a lot of assets, a lot of stuff going on around Siva, so it's something you can expect to see towards the end of the season. Now, something else that's also going to be shown off towards the end of the season is what's inside the secret room underneath the vault on the moon. So underneath where you can currently access right now is actually an additional room, this massive theater that is all pitch black right now. And this room is actually where that dialogue that I talked about with Felwinter is going to take place, where Anna Bray is talking about what happened. So right now you can actually glitch into the room if you know how to and this footage is from my friend Jack and this shows off basically just how you can see nothing in there except a few kind of monitors flashing but what's interesting is that this entire room is actually shown off in a concept art over a year ago by a Bungie artist and this was basically something that was supposedly unused for Rasputin but now Bungie have actually made it into a real room and is going to feature at some point in the season. Now, these are some images from someone called Cloud XXXV who managed to get into the room, but also light it up so you can see and he took some screenshots and this is what a semi lit up version of the room looks like. Again, not the final version, but this is all we can see so far. Something you can actually see pretty clearly is these monitors with the yellow blocks. Now, you may recognize these are, of course, dotted around all of Rasputin's bunkers, but these, I have a feeling, could involve in some kind of puzzle because these do actually relate to the Collector's Edition Shadowkeep booklet. You can also see these screens with the yellow blocks on the concept art for the season artwork, which is interesting as well as the Crucible map anomaly. You can see more screens. Now, like I said, these are actually detailed and laid out across 12 pages in the Collector's Edition Book of Shadowkeep, and they're called Mazen Codes. So these are pretty much error codes for the anomaly to show if something has gone wrong and how the thing inside is actually reacting. I made a whole video talking about what's inside this thing. It's essentially some kind of darkness artifact, but it's being contained in this special prism. And I just get the feeling this wasn't made for no reason. Someone at Bungie clearly spent a lot of time making these 12 pages in the Collector's Edition book. I think it's very likely this could be how we actually are supposed to decode some kind of puzzle using these symbols. Now, something else you'll also find on the Crucible map anomaly is this screen, which I think is very suspicious and I'm fairly sure has some kind of puzzle etched into it. But you can see that big block of gibberish text, which is definitely relating to something. I'm not sure if it's significant or just a tiny Easter egg, but that is definitely a unique string of text. So it's almost identical to the monitors we use for the puzzle back in the Warmind DLC. So almost everything on the screen, the dim stuff you can ignore. That's just generic kind of copy paste stuff that you'll find on every screen. But the two things you'll find a lot brighter is that Warmind mind lock and key symbol and that big block of gibberish text which again you won't find anywhere else in destiny you can see there's even spaces and little periods in between to kind of mark out where the words and sentences might be so i'm pretty sure this relates to something now something else that is similar that i also thought was very interesting can be found in the rasputin bunkers and this is the giant star map on the wall if you haven't noticed this is actually a map of our solar system and everything in it and this is a lot more detailed than you might notice there are some very interesting stuff hidden on this map so of course the giant big glowing orb is actually the sun and these are all typed in Russian lettering. So translated, the first thing it says sun, the next one is Mercury, and then after that you can see it's Venus, the next one is of course going to be Earth, and the tiny little thing off it is the moon. After that we have Mars, which the word looks very similar, and there's actually a little piece missing and floating next to it, and that would be Phobos, one of Mars's moons. Now this next thing after that is a giant belt, and that is actually the asteroid belt, and that is where the reef is located inside of there. 
Now, after that, we have Jupiter, the gas giant, and its tiny little moon of Io, which you can see. And the next one after that is going to be Saturn with its tiny moon of Titan. Now, you might think that's actually it, but there's actually more going on here that you can't see that clearly. So next to it, there are two big orbs which are blacked out, and those are planets we haven't been to yet. And the next one is actually going to be Uranus, which is labeled. You can see the text there, but it isn't illuminated, so you can't see it. And the one next to that is Neptune. Again, you can see the text is there, but it's not illuminated. So it's very hard to see, but those two planets are actually labeled in the orbit in the map. The next thing after that is actually what's called the Kuiper Belt, and that is something we've seen a few times in the lore. There's been some strange creatures that Cade said he saw around the Kuiper Belt, and also where Osiris recently saw a pyramid. Bungie actually recently showed off this lore tab, which was detailing Osiris going very far out to the Kuiper Belt and encountering a pyramid. So there's actually one out there. The main thing we don't know is if it is just one rogue pyramid by itself, like the one on the moon, or if it is the entire pyramid fleet that we know is on the way in the end of the cutscene. So it's very possible it could be all of them, but they're moving, of course, very slowly but Osiris did encounter a pyramid far out here in the Kuiper Belt. As well as that there is also one more detail that is hidden on this map and that is actually Europa. Believe it or not they did deliberately label a dot and the name of Europa right there in Russian and it is labeled next to Jupiter so it's there but it's dimmed out. I've mentioned it a few times in videos recently I don't think we're going to get it in Destiny 2. I think it's going to be a Destiny 3 location but it was mentioned actually this season in a brand new exotic ship it's called the Solar Sails, and this is basically a lore tab about the crew who is not looking forward to going to this frozen tundra and this hell they call Europa. But they're actually going to be heading out there because something secretive has been discovered that nobody is allowed to talk about. And also the old man is there, which is most likely Osiris, but there's something that's been discovered on Europa, which they're heading to. So I did find it interesting that it was mentioned on this lore tab, which again is brand new and you never see Bundy really reference Europa much. And it's also, of course, blacked out on this big map screen. But it is a very, very cool detail. I really like this map and it's just cool to see an actual map of the solar system and what's relevant in Destiny 2 right now. And it would be really cool if this actually changes and animates, if we see something change or some big red blip pop up or something happen and to have it reflected on this big kind of real-time map of our solar system. But either way, a pretty interesting detail in Rasputin's bunkers. Now moving on to something else we're going to be seeing in future content. This is a brand new exotic heavy weapon called the Air Apparent. So this was also data mined by Ginzo, who again is the expert data miner who finds all this stuff. But obviously this is not listed on the roadmap after what happened with Bastion last season. And that kind of let down after the puzzle reward was what was already on the roadmap. But based on when the ornament is available in the Eververse store. So it appears when the weapon is available. And again, that seems to be the 5th of May. Obviously, it's a giant belt-fed kind of minigun, the same one the Colossus used, but you have to actually spin it up in order to use it. That is his first exotic perk. And the second one actually gives you, while at full health, a arc shield that protects you while you're spinning the weapon up. Now, besides the exotic itself, I think the lore tab is also just as interesting because it details a brand new Cabal enemy that we're going to be dealing with at some point soon, which is Callus's daughter. So her name is Keitel or Keitel, but she has basically taken over the Red Legion. She also helped Ghoul get rid of Callus in the first place, but despite being Callus's daughter, she is actually not on Callus' side. She is basically Ghoul 2.0, and she is actually involved in the Fourth Horseman questline. So one of Callus's shadows actually stole the Fourth Horseman from Zavala's vault, which is why we had to go get it, but the shadow was using it against Callus' daughter's army. So that is why his gun is involved in the story. She was also actually mentioned in the Destiny 2 Collector's Edition book. She was one of the conspirators, but she is a big character, and she's going to be a threat at some point. That is what the Air Apparent is actually about, because the Air is Callus' daughter is now taken over at the Red Legion. Now, I was initially also going to make a part of this video to talking about the Felwinter's Helm exotic, which quickly became one of my favorite exotics in the game and basically the only thing I use since the season launched, but it's actually broken right now and it's disabled, so you can't use this helmet anymore, which you may have noticed. The reason it was disabled was because of a bug that was discovered where you can actually switch the thing on and off and you can get a regular kill and it does that same suppressant effect which of course can break crucible and i guess could break trial so bungie disabled it basically immediately and hopefully it's not disabled for too long because i actually love this helmet pretty much any scenario where there's a group of enemies you can just pick them finish one and it will just send out this wave that goes through walls and it will suppress and also weaken the entire group the Hunter chest piece was only recently just enabled, so hopefully it doesn't take as long to fix this, but it's very possible, of course, with situations going on right now, Bungie might not be the quickest to be able to fix this bug. So hopefully it's done soon, but either way, that is why you cannot equip the Felwinter's Helm in case you were trying. 
So that was a lot to get through as promised, lots of talking from me. But if you're still watching and enjoyed, then of course, clicking that little like button before you go would be much appreciated. I hope you're all staying safe and well during these very strange times. And I'm setting up to get you guys more content to watch while you're all at home. So stay tuned to this channel. Hopefully you enjoyed this video nonetheless, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one.